Just real, real, real hard. Don't, just give it all you got, sweetie. Let's have a baby. Yeah, the baby's here, so, but, but all you need to do is push it out, okay? Go for it. Take the sides of those and push out. The baby's sitting there, you're looking at it. Nice big deep breath, real big. Okay, go ahead, we're gonna have a baby. Okay. You're okay, sweetie. Okay. Oh, we got a little boy. Oh, so sick. Hi, guy. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. Come on, you little Okay. You do a good job, is she? Okay. Ty Cole, seven pounds, five ounces. Born into a community once as innocent as he. Cornfly, cornfly, it is fine, Bill. An all-American name. Where the average young couple could afford a nice house. Raise a family and spend their life. Seven pounds, three and three, four. Ty is the fourth generation of his family from here. It's called Maryvale. It's where this NFL All-Pro started his football career. This mother became an activist. This fellow played cops and robbers. He dreamed of becoming famous. She won her first talent show here. Speaking of dreams, this guy had a doozy. He runs a business here. This fellow raised a family here, then got into politics. This guy wanted to own the streets. One of America's first master planned communities. Once miles west from the nearest signs of the big city, Phoenix, but the city and the little community out in the boondocks eventually grew into one another. And Maryvale began to inherit some big city problems. It was the end of innocence. Many experts predicted its demise, tagged it a future urban slum. But how ironic that Maryvale is part of Phoenix because, like the mythical bird, current residents of this community are leading a crusade of rebirth. They're taking on the gangs, the taggers, and the despair. For the next hour, we will spend a week in this community. We will study its birth, its golden years, and its modern day comeback. Please join us for West Side Story. We start our seven days here at this sandwich shop in West Phoenix. The Maryvale High football coaching staff convene for their weekly post-game ritual. Tonight's conversation revolves around their upcoming opponent, rival Trevor Brown, and this year's annual installment of The Big Game. Sitting to the left there are our proud new parents, Philip and Rochelle. Ten years ago, Philip was a student at the school where he now teaches. A few miles to the west, one of his former classmates takes to the streets on his nightly vigil to protect and serve. For eight years, Officer Richard Wooten has patrolled the neighborhood where he grew up. It's nice working out there because I know where I'm going. I don't get lost. Uh, I usually run into the same people that I knew when I was growing up. The biggest difference I can see from when I was growing up to what I see now on the streets, um, I think as I was growing up, I was more frightened about the discipline I was going to get from my mom and dad than what the police could ever do to me. The Maryvale Precinct is one of the busiest in Phoenix. Much of the area's crime-related problems can be attributed to its large youth population. Five Valley High Schools are located in what is the second largest precinct in the city. 
When the city of Phoenix began its controversial curfew program in 1993, most of the adult citizens in the area applauded the plan, including Richard. The curfew program started out in Maryville as a, as a pilot program. The city was looking at ways to, to try to take care of the juvenile problem. You know, on Fridays and Saturdays when these kids leave home, parents rarely know what's going on. So if we have to give them a call at 12 o'clock and say, you know, your son or your daughter is out here at this party, shots are fired, uh, rival gang members were involved in uh, verbal altercation or whatever, it keeps the parents informed and hopefully they can make a decision to uh, take care of the situation so we don't have to deal with it anymore. On this evening, that's exactly what happened. Just down the street from the police station, a small get-together became a big bash. Shots are fired, and Richard is called to the scene. Who was shooting out here? I have no idea. They passed by and they said, I was I happened to be right here when they passed by. And everybody said, that's it. Let me explain to you, if the party starts back up because of the shots fired, uh, you're liable to go to jail. Okay? So it's going to be your responsibility to make sure the party does not start back up. If people start showing up, you go ahead and let us know. How did the party guys inside? The party is over for now, but its effects will be seen by the residents in the morning. Luckily, a neighbor called the police, and the problem didn't escalate into violence. Sometimes in this job, we're, all we're able to do is react. That means we're only able to do something after the fact. Um, it would be great if we could be there prior to something happening to prevent it happening. And sometimes we rely on uh, our citizens to get involved and to be our eyes and ears because they're always going to be there. This is a map that we use to reference where we're at. Just a mile to the north, Tom Tucker exact becomes location. those eyes and ears. What we do is we give each person that's patrolling one of these. What we do is these are not only your bay, these can also be your base station and your mobile. So tonight I'm patrolling, I'm mobile. Tucker and a handful of his neighbors use FM radios cellular phones and scanners to keep watch over their neighborhood. When the Desert Horizon Neighborhood Association started their night patrols, a few critics labeled them as vigilantes. But this group practices a hands-off approach to crime fighting. Well, the purpose of the patrol is to try to, to uh, watch the neighborhood for the police department, give them an extra set of eyes, and also if something's happening, that. If they have to be called on a 911 or a crime stop, that when they get here, there's a, there's somebody that's friendly here for them. We ask them if they want us to help, and if they don't want us to help, we just back off, and if they want us to leave the area, we leave the area. Whatever they want us to do, that's exactly what we do. Uh, Tom and his neighbor's efforts are to be commended, but what is the social landscape of Maryvale that makes them necessary? To understand the current issues facing the people of Maryvale, we must go back to its beginnings. So we visited a group of historians for the true story. Jasper Cartwright came from Illinois to find a better life. He drove a covered wagon west to Sarah's good wife. In 1869, they left for the California shore. Right after the Civil War, the nation's move west began. Reddick Jasper Cartwright, a farmer from Illinois, joined one of the last wagon trains heading for the coast. R.J. settled in the Salt River Valley, west of the new little town of Phoenix. Other pioneers homesteaded land around Cartwright as a new community began to take shape. A need for a school became apparent. And in 1884, a one-room schoolhouse was built. And over 110 years later, these students haven't forgotten their roots. Neither has this former pupil, 
Irene Cartwright Holmes, RJ's granddaughter. Okay, everybody out here farmed, and they grew up together, went to school here together, and, and we were just a real close-knit community. Through the first half of the century, the area remained predominantly a farming community. It was uh, like a lot of wildlife and things like that until everybody uh, cleared off the acreage themselves. And uh, there was a lot of, uh, after World War I, there was a lot of the people came in here and there was a, what we call the soldier section and they had small acreage and they lived out here with their families. Well, I was in, uh, this was World War II, uh, uh, the one that was supposed to make the world safe for democracy and all that. I used my GI Bill to get a financing on a home. We were planning this house for our own use and uh, had an opportunity to sell it before we had it completed. Then I said, well, we'll build another one, which we did, and then sold that. Uh, we sold uh, uh, about 13 houses, I think it was, uh, one at a time, uh, before we started building uh, subdivisions. And thus was the inception of Maryvale, named after John F. Long's home building partner and wife, Mary. After World War II, people and businesses began migrating to the Valley of the Sun. But this was an era before the concept of master planned communities. Long seized the moment, and soon farm fields west of Phoenix began making way for subdivisions. Our first subdivision uh, that we started in 1949 was uh, three bedroom homes, uh, $6,600. In fact, we were the first uh, major builder to use built in appliances. It was at that time then that Ronald Reagan came out, uh, he was the spokesman for GE. And while well, we were buying carload lots of uh, GE appliances. Soon people began flocking to Maryvale to see what all the fuss was about, and homes were selling as fast as Long could build them. During the boom time of Maryvale home construction, 25 houses were being completed each day. Well, I've always felt that it was um, important to build a community rather than just the homes. And as fast as we were building and moving people in, and a lot of them uh, hadn't established roots in, in, the, uh, uh, in the valley. Uh, and it was important to have schools and parks and recreation areas and churches. And that, that's the reason why we developed the overall uh, community concept. For this Midwest transplant, Maryvale was exactly what he was looking for. You could buy the, the same house, uh, same square footage in Maryvale for 10, 15 percent cheaper than you could get in other parts of the city. And when you're coming here as a young, new family uh, with a new job, dollars were tight and it was important to have a nice home, nice neighborhood, good schools, and you know, we had that, uh, and have a budget that you could still buy groceries and, and some of the disposable items that were important to us. In the 70s, Long turned his interest to homes that conserved energy and water. Well, Solar One was an experimental project where the uh, solar collectors that we installed generated all the electricity for the 24 home community. In fact, it uh, generates more electricity than what they use in their homes. The extra, or surplus, is sold to the utility company. Long has garnered national attention for his innovative home building, but some feel his models lack diversity. When first-time homeowners began to improve their lot in life, they had to move away. Many of Long's critics attribute this to some of Maryvale's current growing pains. For those with pride in their property, the homes look much like they did 40 years ago. 